Catan! One of the few games about colonialism that isn't heavily problematic, The Settlers of Catan has become the most common intro into the world of Eurogames. With accessible, yet challenging mechanics, it's good for gamers looking to expand their monopoly-saturated tabletop experience. Here are the stats. Let's get into it. You get 19 terrain hexes, 4 each of fields, pastures, and forest, 3 each of mountains and hills, and the lone, mysterious desert. These will be contained by the 6 C-frame pieces, and the whole affair will be topped with 18 circular number tokens and 9 haba pieces. There's 1 2, 1 12, and 2 of each number in between, except for 7, lost in the sands of the desert. Also some blanks, in case you lose one. Very helpful. The harbors are broken up into four generic and five special, one for each resource. Speaking of resources, there's also 19 cards for each, 95 total. Then we have a deck of development cards made up of 14 night cards, six progress cards evenly spread across three types, and five victory point cards. The last two cards are special, the longest road and largest army. More on those later. Then we have all of the player-specific pieces, evenly split among the four colors of blue, red, orange, and yellow. Each player gets a building cost card, 15 roads, 5 settlements, and 4 cities. Finally, two six-sided dice, one red and one yellow, and the devious, the devilish, the rancorous robber. Whomsoever has obtained 10 points of victory on their turn shall be considered the most successful settler of this island of Catan, as well as the victor. First, setup. Line up the C-frame pieces, with the numbers on the narrow end slotting together. Then, randomly place the harbor pieces over the pre-printed harbors on the frame pieces. Next up, place the terrain hexes randomly into the frame with a random number token on each. I'm saying random a lot. There's technically a preset orientation for all of these pieces, but that's baby mode. We can handle the randomized version. Anyway, to finish off the board, place the robber pawn onto the barren desert hex. Contained for now. Separate all of the resource cards into separate piles, within reach of at least one player. Shuffle all of the development cards together into one deck and place, face down, where all the players can reach it. Everyone picks a color to play and takes all of the corresponding pieces. Finally, we place the first two settlements. Everybody rolls the dice, then whoever got the highest number places the first settlement on any intersection. They, then, place a road on a path leading from that settlement. After that, each player, going clockwise, does the same. They can also place their settlement anywhere, as long as there are no other settlements on any of the adjacent intersections. This is called the distance rule. Once everybody's placed one, whoever placed the last one places a second. Again, anywhere they want, as long as they mind the distance rule. They get one resource from each hex around their second settlement. Brick from hills, lumber from forests, grain from fields, wool from pastures, or from mountains, and nothing from the sea but the dry, dry desert. This continues one by one, counterclockwise, until everyone's placed two settlements. Now, finally, definitely, ultimately, for certain, we can begin. Starting with the oldest player and moving clockwise, each player takes a turn. Each turn is two steps. Rolling for resources, then build it and trade in. Rolling for resources is quick. You just roll the dice and whatever number comes up produces resources. Every player with a building around the hexes with that number gets some. One per settlement and two per city. If you roll a seven, however, we'll get into that later. Suffice to say, it's rough. Oh, also, if you ever run out of a resource in the supply, there's just none left on the island. Tough luck. Now, build in and trade. You can turn in the resources listed on the building cost card to the bank to build that thing. As many times as you want until you're out of resources. You can also trade as much as you want with other players. But be mindful of when everyone is clearly done trading. You can also trade with the harbors and banks. More on that in a minute. To end your turn, pass the dice to the player on your left. Once that player takes the dice, your turn is over. No take backs. Catan shall conclude once a player has 10 victory points on their turn, and they shall be deemed the champion. This can only occur on their turn, if they obtain 10 points between their turns. The game shall continue till it is their turn again.
Okay, let's get into the details. First, the building. You can build four things, roads, settlements, cities, and development cards. The roads require the least, just a lumber and a brick. They have to attach to another road, a settlement, or a city that you own. They don't get you any points on their own. But if you build five in a row, you get the longest road card, which is worth two points. However, if someone else builds a longer road, they'll be taking that from you. They can also build a settlement, following all other rules in the middle of your road to break it. If neither section is at least five pieces long, you lose the longest road to the next longest road that's at least five pieces long, or it goes up for grabs if nobody has a road longer than five pieces. Settlements require the most diverse resources, one each of brick, lumber, grain, and wool. They have to follow the distance rule from before and have to touch one of your roads. They are worth one point though, and they'll get you more resources when the numbers around them are rolled, or even more trading opportunities at harbors. Cities are just beefed up settlements, and thus require the most concentrated resources, two grains and three ores. They must replace an existing settlement, but they're worth two points instead of one, and get you two resources instead of one. Now, development cards. Not too expensive, but not exactly cheap either. You need a wool, a grain, and an ore. What you get can be one of three things. A red knight, a green progress, or even a yellow victory point. Yes, you can just buy points. The victory point cards stay hidden in your hand until the end of the game, either because you reveal them to show that you have the 10 points to win, or in anguish as you reveal how close to 10 you were. There's only five in there though, so keep that in mind. The knight cards are the most common and are pretty straightforward. Any turn after you build them, you can put one down after rolling the dice. Then, you move the robber to a fresh hex, blocking that hex from producing any resources and taking one random resource from the player of your choice that has a settlement or city around that hex. Then, you keep that knight in front of you as a soldier, forming your army. If you're the first to have three soldiers, you get the largest army card and two points. Of course, just like the longest road, if anyone builds a bigger army, they'll take that card away. Progress cards have the most variety, so let's go one by one. There's two of each of these in the deck. You've got road building, which lets you build up two roads immediately, following the normal rules. Year of Plenty, which lets you take any two resources of your choice from the supply. Of course, if you want to be really cheeky, you play a Monopoly, which lets you declare a single resource, at which point every other player must give you all of that resource from their hands. Quick strategy aside, if you have this card, there's nothing stopping you from, say, putting away all of your wool and using Monopoly to get it all back. Just a thought. Now, on to trading. Anytime after you roll on your turn, you can propose a trade. Just say, what would someone want for X? Of course, you can also just skip trading with people and trade with the cold machine of the game. You can trade four of the same type of resource with the bank for any one resource. If you have a settlement or city on a harbor, you even get the option of maritime trading, either generic trading, three of the same type of resource for any one resource, or special trading, two of a specific type of resource for any one resource. Now that we're at the end, there's one last rule, and that's... the robber. When you roll a seven, the most common roll on 2d6s, the robber activates. Everyone who has eight or more resources must immediately discard half of them, rounding down. Then, the roller enlists the robber, moving him to a new hex to temporarily drain it of all resources and rob one of the players bordering it, a single random resource. It's basically the night card with an extra step. I just think it's a weird addition to the theming that there's just a dude living in the desert of this empty island running around stealing stuff. So that's Settlers of Catan. That should cover everything, but if you still have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you liked this, please take the time to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell. It would really mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching, everybody.